I want to introduce to you an evidence-based practice called paired reading. This is another one of our strategies for increase, increasing reading fluency for our students. So we'll start with what is paired reading. Paired reading is a research-based fluency strategy used with readers who lack fluency. When using partners, more fluent readers can be paired with less fluent readers, or children who read at the same level can be paired to reread a story that they've already read. Paired reading can be used with any book, taking turns reading by sentence, paragraph, page, or chapter. So when do we use paired reading? We use paired reading during our reading instruction, or during our reading, and we use it with small groups. We want to use paired reading because it helps students work together, and it encourages cooperation and supports our peer-assisted learning. So when we're looking at pairing those students, we have a pattern that we follow. We list all of our students in order from highest to lowest according to reading ability. Then we divide that list in half and place the top student in the first list with the top student in the second list. And then we continue this pattern until all students have been partnered. Let's see what that looks like. In this class, you can see that if from 1 to 10, Miguel is my top reader in the top half of the class, when I divide them evenly, Marcus is my top reader for the level of students, for the students who uh, are not as strong. So Miguel will be partnered with Marcus, Janae will be partnered with Amber, Nick is partnered with Lena, Laurel is partnered with Renzo, and Dante is partnered with Aaron. And we continue to go down the list for as many students as we have from the top half to the bottom half. When we pair students, we need to be sensitive to the pairings of students who have different disabilities, learning needs, emotional needs, and then we can adjust our pairings as necessary. The reader from the first list should write, should read while the first reader, while the first reader from the second list listens and then follows along. The second reader should pick up where the first reader stops. If additional practice is needed, the second reader can reread what the first reader read. You should encourage pairs to ask each other about what was read. What was your page about? What was your favorite part? How do you implement paired reading in four steps? We start with introducing the students to the paired reading strategy. This includes establishing a routine for students to adopt so that they know the step-by-step -step requirements for engaging in paired reading. For instance, will they read out loud simultaneously? Will they take turns with each person reading a paragraph, a page, or will one person read while the other person listens? Teaching students an error correction procedure to use when supporting each other's reading is necessary. So for instance, we should reread misread words or have signals for difficulty. And then model the procedure to ensure that the students understand how to use the strategy. Step two, we ask students to begin reading in pairs and adjust reading speed if necessary, um, adjust reading speed if reading simultaneously so that they stay together. Step three, we have students offer feedback and praise frequently for correct reading. And four, we monitor and support students as they work. Now in terms of differentiated instruction, we do have to consider second language learners and students of varying reading skills, students who might have learning disabilities, or even just younger learners. And in that case, we want to make sure that we differentiate the reading material that we provide to the pairs. And we should encourage rereading passages rather than reading forward for students who might need extra practice. So what does this look like in a real classroom? Let's look at an example. So far with Daily 5, we've spent a lot of time with Read to Self. Now we're going to really work on how to do Read to Someone. So when you talk to me about how we do it, we've made an I chart. What does the I stand for? Artist independence. Which means that what? That, that, that you can do stuff. So I have a job and you have a job. Now, first job you have is to sit in Eek. Who can show us really quickly? Roy and Veronica? Let's see, do they have it? Elbow to elbow, knee to knee. Show us how it doesn't look. Okay, because that's nose to nose. You're absolutely right. Thank you for showing us what eek looks like. Really, really important, of 
course, to listen to who's reading to you. Show me how we're going to judge whether or not we have a whispering voice. Show me. How does that look? Just check your vocal cords. If you can feel them, then you're not using a whispering voice. Of course you'll want to stay in one spot, and of course you'll want to get started right away. But how are we going to do it? Well, boys and girls, when I read to you, I do a lot of this. What do we check for understanding? That's your job. You're going to be doing the who and the what with your partner, whoever you're reading with. So let's have uh, Suella and Gavin. Could you just come and sit right in the middle for us? Now, one of them needs to be the checker, and one of them needs to be the reader. The reader. So you're going to start off as the checker. You have a job to do. Your job is to check for understanding. On the back it says, I just heard you read who and what. You'll have to tell the person who read to you who they read to you about and what happened when they were reading. So let's pick a book. One day, Grandma took Jenny and Shovna shopping for new winter coats. I just heard you read who it's about Jenny and Jonah, what it's for the shopping for new winter coats. So now we're going to go and find appropriate reading spots, get our book boxes, and practice read to someone being a checker and being a reader. All right, and that's paired reading.